Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in my Java video tutorial series. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is covering the basic tools that you'll need uh, to get started with the Java programming language. Okay, um, I want to do this first uh, before I get into any topics um, with respect to Java as a programming language or you know the syntax of anything. Um, I just want you guys to be able to have everything set up and ready to go so that I can start explaining and then you can start plugging away with the examples. So the first thing that you need to know um, about getting everything set up is you need something called the um, the Java JDK. Okay, so uh, there's two sort of things, uh, two sort of packages that you could download, uh, but only one of them is the one that you want there's the JDK or the JRE okay and I don't want you to get mixed up uh, between the two of them because the JRE is just a runtime environment okay uh, so what this the JRE is is basically you will need it on your computer if you want to run any Java programs uh, and you most likely have this installed already um, because you probably are already able to run any sort of Java program um, from a website or something like that so yes, it's most likely already installed, but what you want is the JDK, uh, which is the development kit, the Java development kit. And this is what you'll use to actually create your Java programs, okay? So let's go to uh, the first uh, link here, which is to the Oracle website. Oracle is the company that now owns Java. And what we'll do is, I guess we'll just grab the latest um, platform, the JDK 7, I guess. So let's click on the Java here and you'll get a um, little I guess section here uh, where you'll have to accept the license agreement so let's accept that and then depending on your operating system um, you'll have to choose the appropriate one here uh, I'm on a Windows 64-bit system um, if you are on a Windows system and you don't know if you have a regular um, uh, Windows or if you have a 64-bit Windows so a 32-bit or a 64-bit I think you can go to your start, I uh, think it's in control panel, I haven't actually checked this so I'm kind of doing this off the cuff. Um, I'm going to search for system maybe and click on the system, the green system icon. Uh, and here you go, yeah, system type. So you see that I have a 64-bit operating system, okay? So I will choose 64-bit and choose the executable file and download. All right, so while that downloads, that's the first thing you'll need. The second thing you'll need, let's go to uh, Google and we will grab something called Spring Source uh, Tool Suite. Okay, so Spring Source Tool Suite. And this is what you're going to use to actually create your Java programs. Okay, it's kind of like a it's kind of like notepad only on a whole lot of drugs. It allows you to, um, to um, it, it eases the, the uh, sort of the pain of development, if you will. It, it allows you to do a whole lot with respect to development. So I will go to download Spring Tool Suite, and then you'll have this registration form. You can fill it out if you like, or you can just say, take me to the download page if you don't want to register. And here, as of the recording of the video um, on November 11th, 2012, the latest edition for Spring Source Tool Suite is uh, 3.1. So I will go ahead and download. Actually, I've already downloaded it as a zip file. You can get either the exe or the zip. Um, so yeah, I've already downloaded it as a zip file. Um, so now that our so click on that, it'll go right to the start. You know, downloading the program. Um, and then while that's downloading, you probably have your um, your JDK ready to go. So I'm just going to run the JDK installation process right now. So I'll say run. So hopefully you'll do you'll be doing the same thing, and should just be a, a standard uh, installation. I would make note of where it's going here. So I, the default location is program files Java. Um, but if you if you're changing this, just make note of where you're putting this because we need to um, set up some um, 
I think an environment variable for this plus the spring source tool suite program will ask us where it's installed so I'll just note where that is and say next and I'll let that go and then while that's downloading I think what I'll do is shoot over to my okay so now one thing to note here when you are installing the uh, the JDK is sometimes it, it seems like it stopped and I, actually what it does is it pops up a different window and uh, and asks you where to install yet another uh, piece of the installation progress um, or installation process so just be aware that it might pop this up um, and that you should click on it and say next and let it do its thing um, so that's kind of a, a gotcha that's that's puzzled me before about this whole process I was sitting around and waiting for it for quite a while before I realized oh it had another window that opened and I just needed to put that window through its paces and then it finishes uh, finishes the recording of itself pro or the installation of itself properly um, so now let's see if this finishes quick enough okay so now you can see it says it's been successfully installed you can register and whatnot but I don't usually do that and say close um, so now we've we've successfully installed our JDK version 7 um, so I just close that window and what I want to do now is hopefully you've also installed or uh, downloaded the um, spring the tool suite STS by now um, so I have that file here just a zip file so if you got the zip file then great um, if not then it'll just ask you to um, uh, choose a directory of where you want to install the spring source uh, tool suite so um, if you're doing the uh, zip file way I just extract extract it to my C drive uh, under spring source and I just give it a version this one was 3.1.0 so I'll just extract that and one more thing that you should be aware that you need to do is set something called a an environment variable okay so uh, I'm only familiar with how to do this in the Windows operating system but if you're using a Mac um, I'm sure you can find a, a Google page or page through Google that will explain how to set up the Java environment variable um, and if you're curious for how to do that you can just Google Java home uh, environment uh, variable maybe setting the Java home environment variable in Windows and there's also I'm sure you could say in Mac you know so um, I'm sure there are pages that are available that will explain that to you um, but for the Windows process I go to um, I believe it's in control panel and what if I just type in environment yeah so edit system environment variables I believe is what it is yep and so it'll get a system properties window will pop up and here there's a little button that says environment variables click on that guy and um, then I think you can add it as a system variable now mine is already set um, let me delete it and pretend like um, like I'm in the situation where you are so I will say new okay for a system variable and I need to name it so it will be a capital Java underscore home I believe the capitals are important and the value is where the actual JDK is installed okay so remember I said that was important so that was in program files Java and I've got a whole bunch of them installed in my system right now but that's alright and I believe it's this this one here so I just you can actually just click in here on Windows 7 to get the path so I just copy this guy and then paste it into here and say OK alright and you say OK and you say OK so now my environment variable is properly set for the Java home um, so again if I go back into edit the system um, environment variables click on environment variables in the system variable screen I can find my Java home now set to JDK 170 all right. Now, finally, 
the last step is to launch your Spring Source tool suite. So I just installed that here, Spring Source 3.1.0. And I think it is in this folder, the STS folder. So here's your, uh, your executable file. So you can just double click on this guy to run your Spring Source tool suite. Now what it'll do is it'll ask you, I believe, to choose a workspace. Okay, and you can just think of a, a workspace here as um, uh, pretty much just like a, a desktop for um, your your Spring Source Tool Suite program. Okay, um, I usually, I guess there's, it, it's completely up to you where you want to put this thing. I usually just put it in, you know, my work spaces or something like that. It, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, it'll remember where your workspace is the next time you launch the program. So that's kind of nice. So I say okay. And it's the first time launching the program, so it might take a little bit longer than normal. Alrighty. So uh, I've, I've never used this particular version of Spring Source Tool Suite before. This is, I'm usually on uh, 2.9, I believe. So I haven't seen this error or message before. Um, it sounds like it has something to do with some source management software, which I'm not concerned with. Um, now this is saying the home variable is not set. Uh, again, this is the same thing with Git. Okay, I don't think I care about that. Um, so I will just, this is the welcome screen. I usually just close the welcome screen so that I can see the normal uh, layout of the program. And there we have it. So now everything should be uh, set up. The one thing that's different, when you choose to install from the zip file uh, as opposed to the... Um, the executable, the MD, what was it? Just sorry, the executable file here is that it doesn't ask you to uh, set up your or point to the um, the JDK. So I suspect that it might not be set up right now, uh, and I'm just going to verify that. Um, okay, so I don't believe it is set up right now. So I will, again, I went to Window Preferences, and then inside of the Java um, menu here, I look at the installed, um, oh, actually, this is the runtime. No, this is the JD case. So I only have 1.6 installed, um, but I had just downloaded and installed the 1.7. Um, so I believe, let's see. If I go to Program Files and Java and select, now it's asking for the JRE. I'm wondering if it's going to like that. It looks like it likes that. Okay. So then you can switch. I mean, you may not have the, the 1.6 installed. You might just have the 1.7. But since... Um, you most likely don't have 1.6 installed. This is a very necessary step um, when, again, when you go through using the zip file. I believe if you had installed the executable file, it would have asked you, um, as part of the installation process, to point to the directory of the JRE, or the JDK, sorry. So when you hit that point in, in the installation, um, you'll need to point it to that directory, just the base, you know, program files, Java, and then the JDK, okay? And then that'll set that properly, and then you are good to go. Okay, so it's a bit an annoying, that whole you know process, um, uh, but it is a necessary process to get everything uh, set up and ready to go to uh, create your first Java program. Okay, so we won't have to do that again unless you install a whole new version of um, the Spring Source Tool Suite or if you want to install a whole new uh, JDK when a new version comes out or something like that, which is not very frequent, um, then you can go ahead and do that again. But we won't have to do this again for probably you know a good you know year or something like that, depending on how up to date you like to keep with your stuff. So, all right.
hopefully that was very uh, informative for you, and uh, and I can't wait to see you in the next episode.